Okay, so we need to get this carboy cleaned, actually both carboys, this one and the small one. We're gonna clean both of those. Um, even though we don't yet know if we even need the small one, but I want it clean and ready just in case. So what it is, just put soapy, soapy water in here. And this is the best I can do, is just swish it around. It's a really big jug and it's kind of heavy. So you don't want to drop this thing and it crashes to the ground and breaks. Um, but I'm putting soapy water in here and swishing it around the best I can. And then I'll drain this out and rinse it with just regular clear water, tap water. And then lastly, we'll do a Camden rinse just like this so that the whole jug gets cleaned and sanitized. And we'll do that to both jugs. And then we also have a few other materials that we need, which is, um, we need this little bung for the jugs. And then um, I'm gonna sanitize this as well, my cheesecloth, I reused the same cheesecloth from last time. And my fill, uh, funnel, as well as, uh, a small kitchen strainer. I'm going to try using this small kitchen strainer size, a plastic one, um, and a stainless steel bowl. A small stainless steel bowl. And I think that's what we're going to need in terms of materials. So we got to clean and sanitize everything, and then we can get started. Now, this is going to be messy, but my plan here is to get all of the bananas and solids transferred into one bucket and all the juice transferred into another bucket. And then I can use the filter and the cheesecloth to, um, to transfer the juice from the bucket into the carboy. So for step one, I just really kind of wanna use my strainer mainly and try and get all the solids transferred into one bucket and all the juice into another bucket. So, that's what I'm going to start working on, and like I said, this is a messy operation. We're not going to need these lids. I'm going to move these lids out of the way. Um, so you can strain out that stuff and put it in another bucket. See, this stuff will clog up the cheesecloth real bad. So we're using this, you know, the big hole strainer here to kind of get some of that stuff out. So we don't clog up the cheesecloth. Now we kind of have two buckets of juice and I'm just gonna scoot this one out of the way. I'll temporarily move it out of the way. I'll put the carboy in here so you can see what I'm doing. This is not easy. The, um, I already know what happens. The cheesecloth is a really fine mesh, so it catches all the solids, but it also, it makes it hard. It clogs up because it's so fine. So the juice doesn't really flow through it very well once it gets clogged, as you'll see. Not too bad so far. See now the cheesecloth is kind of starting to slow down. It's still filtering through okay, but. is uh, I'm gonna slide it around a little to get to the part of the cloth that's cleaner.
don't screw up and uh, let your cheesecloth slip, you know, so the water, the juice slips through past it because then you'll have too much sediment in your wine. It just takes forever to settle out. You want to try and get all that sediment out. And just get the juice. I don't know if you can see it, but the cheesecloth is now pretty gross. It's got all this sludge and stuff stuck on it. So we're going to have to, probably after the first bucket here, go wash out our cheesecloth in the sink with some water before we can do the second bucket. But now I have an empty bucket, so I can move the solids from that, that bucket into this bucket, and then I'll have that bucket full of juice and the, the other bucket of juice. And then I'll have all the solids in one bucket, I can pitch it. Okay, so that bucket's done. I'm gonna go rinse the cheese pot and the strainer off in the sink. We have one jug transferred in there already, and I'll move the camera down here, you can see. I don't know if it's a third full. We might only fill the car the large carboy and not the small one. We'll see. So by the way, I know this is messy, so I actually usually do this in an indoor shower. I have a walk-in shower in my downstairs bathroom, which is cool. Um, but, but it is messy, so you could do it on the patio if that is easier for you. Um, but yeah, so now I got kind of my cleaned up cheesecloth. And we're going to try and filter the second bucket through. Now we're done with uh, two. Boom. And our jug is a little over half full. We're not in bad shape. I'm going to go wash these again. <laughs> now, this third bucket is going to be a little tricky. Um, it's got all the solid waste in it from all three buckets. But we're going to transfer all that into this bucket in the back here. Now we want to try and get all the juice we can. Uh, yeah, this is the really nasty part. Um, we're going to get all the solids out and get as much juice as we can out of the bucket number three here. Yeah, the bananas are broken down pretty well. I don't know how much juice comes out of a banana, but they definitely broke down and fermented pretty well. My must doesn't have a really strong banana flavor to it, though, I don't think. We'll see. Um, you know, the wine is going to continue to develop in flavor as it, as it sits. We're going to leave it in the carboy there for about three months. Probably after one month, we'll have to rack it which means we'll take all the wine out of it with a, with a siphon and then we'll clean out the carboy. We'll, we'll clean out the um, solids that settle down to the bottom and then we'll transfer the wine back into the carboy and top it off. We'll do that probably about a month from now. So we won't need to touch it for the next month. So the high maintenance part of making wine is really in the first week and then doing this after at the end of the first week and then bottling. Those are kind of the big high touch parts. So after this we're done with like 80% of the work I'd say. But um, it takes, it's odd, so solids suspended in the, in the juice there are going to actually take about probably three months to settle out or maybe at least a month and a half for some of it. But the, the, the wine will continue to clarify probably for up to a year. Gravity works really slowly, I guess. But solids settle out of wine over, over a long, slow period of time. And you'll see some sediment will develop on the bottom of the carboy as it ages. Which is, that's great, that's what we want. We want the wine to kind of clarify as the particles settle out of it. Um, but after we're done with this, this is important. After we're done transferring all the must into that into the um, carboy, 
we are going to add a little bit more stuff to it. Um, mainly Camden tablets. We're probably going to add like four more Camden tablets. That's going to stop bacteria from multiplying in there because we obviously contaminated it with our process today here. The Camden is going to help control that bacteria. Um, and then if you want to add any other flavors, you can. A better time to add like vanilla or any other flavors you want to add in is before the primary fermentation. But it's, you still could add some stuff. You still could add something now if you wanted to add any more flavors to it. Um, and then also if we top off this carboy, you have the choice of you could top it off with water or you could use like a bottle of um, white wine, like a Cabernet or something. If you want to add body or flavor to it, you could add a bottle or two of, of Cabernet to top off your carboy there. That won't dilute the alcohol content and it'll add a little bit of flavor and round up the wine some. So I may do that if I have some cab on hand. Or Chardonnay, rather. But yeah, we almost got this. So that is our banana wine. Now I'll transfer to carboy. It looks like it's about probably 85% full. We still have some room in there. There's about room for another gallon maybe. Um, you need to top the carboy off. We need to bring it. You want you okay, leave an inch for breathing room, but we need to get most of that air out of there. So we need to fill her up to about here. Uh, and you can either use filtered water. Or like I said, you could use a white wine. I'm, what I got is basically I got one bottle of white wine that I'm going to pour in there. And I think that'll probably add a little bit of flavor and body to the banana wine. So I'm going to pour that in and then I'll top it off the rest of the way with filtered water. And we also need to add some more Camden tablets, um, like I said earlier. So we're going to put in four crushed Camden tablets. We're going to stir those in as well. And then we're going to put... Uh, an air cap on there, an air seal on top, and let it sit for a while. Um, now at this point, so far the wine has been fermenting at about 75 degrees, 80 degrees, uh, room temperature basically. Um, but we would prefer at this point to transfer it to a wine cellar where it could sit in, let's say, a 55 degree room. Uh, 58 degrees would be ideal, perfect, but I don't have that. I live in California where we have slab foundations. We don't have basements. If you have a basement, that'd be probably a good place, um, but I don't. So all I have is this room here. <laughs> my garage gets too hot in the summer. So I'm going to have to keep mine in the house, probably it's still at 75 degrees, unfortunately, which is not ideal. Um, but if you have a cool room, you would, at this point, you'd want to transfer the, the carboy into that carefully. Not, 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 this is hard to move this thing. But uh, transfer it into a cool room and let it sit there in the dark would be best. After you get the ingredients set up and everything, and then you got your banana sludge that you got to get rid of, and you got to clean up the buckets. There's a lot of cleanup work going on.
and you will continue to hear some bubbling. It will continue to bubble out of there because there's still fermentation going on. This is called secondary fermentation. It'll probably continue for a few weeks. It's probably going to be bubbling a lot for a few days because there's still some sugar left in the wine there. Small amount. A lot of the yeast has started to die off though. So there will be a lower grade fermentation going on still.